If you've been hearing about fatty liver lately and thinking, what's the big deal? Then today's video is for you. Now, did you know that if your liver's packing on some extra fat, it might be putting you at risk for blocked arteries? Yeah, it's a bit concerning. Now, we're diving deep today and unveiling some foods that are not doing our livers any favors. Shockingly, some of these foods wear a health halo. Yep, they're masquerading around as good for you. It's crazy, but studies are showing more and more people have been dealing with fatty liver since 2019. A little fat in the liver is okay, but if it's packing more than 5% fat, yikes. The sneaky thing is, our liver doesn't usually shout, hey, I need help. It just chugs along, doing its thing, even if it's 90% damaged. So by the time we realize it, we might already be staring at some scary stuff like cirrhosis or even liver cancer. All right, let's jump in and figure out what's best for our hardworking livers. And hey, if you enjoy this kind of content and find it useful, do us a favor and hit that like button, drop your thoughts in the comments, and give that subscribe button a click. Don't forget the notification bell. It's your VIP pass to all our health insights. Let's start. Number eight on our countdown is something that you have probably sprinkled on your fries, maybe even added a dash to your home-cooked meals. Yep, it's salt. Now, I'm sure most of you've heard about the usual suspects like high blood pressure or heart disease that come knocking with too much salt. But here's a curveball for you. Too much salt can also lead to, you guessed it, fatty liver. Mind blown, right? Studies have found that even without overeating or gaining weight, an overload of sodium can make your liver pack more fat. Why? Well, it seems like excess sodium gets the liver all inflamed and fibrous. So next time you're reaching for that salt shaker, maybe think twice. A good goal is under 2,300 milligrams a day. That's roughly just a teaspoon. Of course, always chat with your healthcare provider about what's best for you. A little moderation can go a long way. All right, folks, coming in at number seven. Drum roll, please. Fast food. Shocked? Probably not. Now, we've all had those late night cravings and that drive through can look pretty tempting. But here's the scoop. You know those unhealthy oils? Fast food joints are the biggest fans. They're cheap, perfect for rapid cooking. Sounds good, right? Wrong. The catch is, they don't just fry with that oil once. They use it over and over, each time turning it nastier than before. Imagine, with every fry up, these oils just keep collecting harmful stuff like aldehydes and those scary sounding lipid peroxides. It's like an evil cocktail that showers your insides with bad radicals. And let's not even start on the typical low fiber, high bad stuff content in most fast foods. So try whipping up some dishes at home. Not only is it fun, but you also get to be the boss of what's on your plate. If cooking isn't your jam, no worries. When eating out, maybe give a nod to places that favor healthier ways of cooking like grilling or steaming. Rolling in at number six, brace yourselves. It's those sneaky refined carbohydrates. Now, before you side-eye that slice of white bread, let's break it down. Ever munch on something and feel a quick surge of energy? Chances are, you've just had a good dose of refined carbs. Here's the lowdown. Our bodies turn them into glucose super fast. Now, while we love glucose for giving us that energy pep, too much at once and our body's like, whoa there, cowboy. To handle the overload, it stashes some away in the liver as fat and bam. Now, here's the kicker. Refined carbs, things like white bread, your favorite pasta, and that sushi rice have had their good parts, the fibery bits, stripped away. Without them, these carbs are like express trains that shoot glucose straight into our bloodstream, making our liver work overtime. And if that's not bad enough, high blood sugar, especially from these bad boys, goes around causing chaos, inflaming, and wrecking our arteries. Heart disease, anyone? So maybe next time, consider going brown. Think whole grains, brown rice, the whole shebang. Okay, sliding in at number five, processed foods. Yep, those sneaky little things. You know, if there was an evil villain in the food world, processed foods would definitely fit the bill. It's like they took a roll call of all the bad stuff, refined carbs, salt, sugar, and those nasty oils, and threw them all in. Ever wonder why those chips or cookies taste so darn good? It's not magic, it's science. 
Processed foods are often loaded with additives and chemicals that make them last forever on the shelves and taste like heaven. It's kind of like Dr. Frankenstein's monster, but for food. And get this, there's a cheeky term in the food industry, the bliss point. It's that perfect mix of sugar, salt, and fat that makes us go, hmm, just one more bite, okay, maybe one more. These foods are designed to be addictive, so it's not just you, it's the science behind them making you crave them. The aftermath? We end up overeating, piling on the pounds, feeling sluggish, and just plain out of whack. But don't despair. The good news is, we have the power to turn things around. How? Ditch those ready-to-eat frozen meals, those sugary cereals, and anything else that looks like it was made in a lab. Not a kitchen. And hey, cooking at home might sound like a chore, but it's really not that bad. Ever tried batch cooking? Whip up a big meal, divide, freeze, and voila. Homemade ready-to-eat meals that are not only great for your body, but for your wallet, too. All right, on to number four. Brace yourselves, toxic oils. Now, before you drop that frying pan, let's chat about this. Do you know how some oils are often paraded around as the golden children of the health world? It turns out not all that glitters is gold. Firstly, the supervillain in the oil world, trans fats are found chilling in stuff like margarine and some baked goodies. They get added to give foods a longer shelf life. But the sad truth, they're like that friend you can't get rid of. They stick around in your body, causing all sorts of drama like inflammation and clogged arteries. And don't get me started on vegetable oils. Things like canola, corn, and even sunflower oil might sound healthy, but surprise, surprise, they can be more sinister than they look. They're kind of delicate, and when exposed to heat or light, they can go rogue, leading to cell damage and other issues. There was even a study in 2018 that called out these oils as being, let's say, problematic for our hearts. But wait, there's a silver lining. Good old olive oil is your buddy. It's rich in good fats and has received some pretty sweet shout-outs for its liver-protecting benefits. Now let's talk about coconut oil. It's had its ups and downs in the health world, but a recent study suggested that coconut oil could be a little hero against fatty liver disease. And yeah, while it's a bit early to jump on the coconut oil fixes everything bandwagon, it's a promising start. All right, diving into number three, it's alcohol. You know, our liver is like the ultimate bodyguard, always on duty to protect us. When we take a sip of that beer or cocktail, the liver jumps into action. Alcohol is, in essence, a toxin. Our liver's priority is to filter it out, which sounds good, but continuous exposure causes wear and tear. This results in conditions like cirrhosis, which can be a stepping stone to even scarier outcomes like liver failure and cancer. On top of that, many alcoholic drinks, especially fruity cocktails or certain beers, are sugar-packed. So now your liver has a double duty, detoxing alcohol and managing the sugar spike. Now, a little alcohol in moderation, say a drink a day for women and up to two for men, might not be a disaster. But consistently overdoing it can be harmful, Ever thought about taking a break, like doing a dry January or dry July? Research from the Royal Free Hospital in London found that abstaining from alcohol for just one month led to a decrease in liver fat, improvement in insulin resistance, and better markers for liver health. It's pretty impressive how our bodies reward us when we treat them right. So as you raise your glass, give a nod to your hardworking liver. Remember, it's not about cutting out the fun, but just being mindful. Next on our countdown is number two, red and processed meats. Red and processed meats are staples in many diets, but have you ever wondered about their impact on our liver and heart? Let's break it down a bit. Saturated fats, which are pretty high in these meats, are tricky for our bodies. Picture them as that sticky, gooey substance that is hard to get off your hands. In a similar manner, our body finds it challenging to break down these fats. The result? They might just cozy up in our liver, leading to what's called non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, or NAFLD for short. It's a common issue in the West, especially with the rise in obesity. Now, what about those processed meats, like your favorite salami or hot dogs? Besides the delicious taste, they also come packed with additives and high sodium. 
Over time, this can cause inflammation, which doesn't bode well for our liver. From our heart's perspective, the saturated fats in red meats have another downside. They raise our LDL cholesterol, the kind that's not too friendly. Imagine it like traffic buildup on a busy road. That's what happens in our arteries, increasing heart disease risks. A major 2016 study even connected the dots between high red and processed meat consumption paired with soft drinks and an increased risk of NAFLD. And here's a shocker. The World Health Organization actually lists processed meats as potential cancer causers. But hey, don't despair. Meat can still be on the menu. It's all about choices. Going for leaner cuts, Cutting down on processed stuff and exploring other protein options can make a big difference. Everything in moderation, right? All right, let's dive into the biggest troublemaker of them all. At number one, sugar. I know, it's in almost everything, from that delicious morning latte to our favorite comfort foods. But the problem with sugar goes way deeper than those pesky calories. You see, when we eat sugar, our body breaks it down into glucose and fructose, Glucose gets energy points. It's what our body's cells burn for fuel. But any extra? Well, that's where our liver steps in to store the surplus. Fructose, especially the type in high fructose corn syrup, heads straight to the liver, putting it under a lot of stress. Let me paint a picture. Imagine a factory working overtime without breaks. The workers, or in this case, our liver, get exhausted. Any sugar they can't process ends up being stored as fat. Not just any fat, but often in and around vital organs like our liver itself. Now here's a kicker. High levels of sugar in the blood start some seriously harmful chain reactions. Think of it as setting off dominoes, leading to things like atherosclerosis, that's a fancy term for artery disease, increasing the risk of diabetes, and even damaging nerves. Yep, all that from sugar. And oh, those sneaky artificial sugars like high fructose corn syrup? These bad boys are like ninjas, hiding everywhere from sodas to cereals. They get absorbed super quickly, causing our liver to suddenly deal with a sugar rush. A study even gave mice a high fructose diet, and guess what? They ended up with fatty livers and a higher risk of liver tumors in just a few months. Yikes! Another scary part? The same high fructose diet messed with the mice's intestinal barrier. That's our body's defense system keeping harmful bacteria and toxins at bay. But there's more. A study pointed out that folks who enjoyed their diet sodas too much had a whopping 67% higher chance of developing type 2 diabetes and a 36% higher risk of metabolic syndrome, a dangerous mix of conditions that makes heart and liver diseases more likely. Sugar is crafty, it lures us in, and before we know it, we're hooked. But with a bit of determination and smarter choices, we can break free. After all, our health, energy, and overall well-being are worth it, right? All right, folks, we've journeyed through our list of the eight foods that cause fatty liver and blocked arteries. If there's one thing to take away, it's that awareness is our first step. Knowing what we consume and making informed choices can be the difference between health and a host of problems down the line. Remember, Moderation is key, and every little positive change counts. Making healthier choices today can lead to a brighter, healthier tomorrow. Hey, if you found this video insightful, give it a thumbs up. It helps us reach and educate more people. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss out on future content. Have any thoughts or questions? Drop them in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for joining us on this journey. Stay informed, stay healthy, and see you in the next video.